third. Three, two, one. It's the Puff and Steph podcast. Friday, we meet again. Puff and Steph, the podcast, hanging out on your listening device or your viewing device. A device of some kind. Whether you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, whatever, we appreciate it. Or if you're watching us on Facebook or YouTube, we also appreciate that too. If you are watching us, you'll notice we're matching today. Look at this. We, we did it on purpose. We like called each other. It's like, Steph, what are you wearing? And you're like, oh, I'm thinking about wearing some blue. I'm like, I'm going to wear some blue. It really brings out my face. Okay, cool. <laughs> It brings out your face. <laughs> the whole face just brings it right out. Well, right. Well, we usually have to talk ahead of time about what we're wearing because we don't want to show up wearing the same thing again because that would be so awkward. Oh, I don't even want to talk about that one day. When we both wear that, that uh, the it was like it was like a green skirt. <laughs> so, yeah, that was awkward. Well, it was a weird show. All right. Uh, today's show brought to you by Freisinger Hyundai, right on the price, right on the pike. From the American Shaman to PA Studios, Flower Fridays are here every Friday, like today. Visit an American Shaman to PA store for a free Shaman Smoke Hemp Cigarette. No purchase necessary. So we started a new thing uh, yesterday where we're going to be doing in the month of December, Steph Christmas questions. Now this is not trivia. This is not trivia. We already do stump Steph at the end of the show. These are Steph Christmas questions, questions to get to know Steph's love of Christmas a little bit more, get to know Steph and her Christmas spirit. I love it. I'm so glad you thought of this. Well, this one could be controversial. Oh, our controversial th- Christmas. Are there any Christmas songs you don't like? Oh, yes. Do you have, is there many or just a couple? One? So, technically, there's three. Okay. Um, You're probably going to agree with at least two. Well, I know you're going to agree with at least two of them because we used to have battles over whether or not to play this and you and I were on the same page. Um donkey for christmas or dominic Uh, the donkey donkey or whatever yeah that's stupid that's a dumb one not a fan um the 12 (laughs) pink yeah it's just i mean i'm all for like fun and festive but it's just a little obnoxious um the 12 pains of christmas which i know you also hate (laughs) so dumb so so dumb and the third one is gonna come in a little controversial and I've just, I don't know. It just gives me weird vibes. And it's the little drummer boy. Not a fan. It gives you weird vibes? Yeah, it's just like slow and like creepy. And even like the cartoon movie, the little drummer boy. Come they like, told It's a happy, feel good, upbeat. Pa, rum, ba, pum, pum. <laughs> nope, I like it. It's weird. Me and my drum. Um, let's see. Yeah, I, I, I never really, I don't really have a, uh, a thought on the little drummer boy. I'm not a huge Christmas music person like you are. However, what was it? Something was stuck in my head the other day, and it was a Christmas song, and it made me think of you. <gasps> I'm so proud. I can't. I don't. Honestly, I, I'm. I'm not even going to sit here and really think about it. But there was a Christmas song, a popular one, stuck in my head um, while I was delivering packages the other day. Oh my gosh! Because were you like feeling like Santa? Like you're like in the Christmas spirit? I don't think so. I didn't think about it that way. <laughs> I thought it was just annoying and stuck in my head. And I, I already not a huge fan of that job. It's just another way of torturing me, apparently. Oh, oh, okay. I thought maybe it was like a good thing. Like, no. cause now it's Christmas season. You're feeling no. festive. No, I mean, here's the thing. I don't hate Christmas music. And I, I want to throw, I want to put that out there right there. I don't hate Christmas music. And you Better know, not. And you know this, you know, I don't hate it. I just wouldn't like, I'd rather listen to other things. Like I, I just not, I don't get put into the Christmas spirit by Christmas music. I don't. Right. I mean, let's be honest. I don't think anybody pictures you driving around in your car listening to Rudolph. You know, I just don't see it. (laughs) If I had to pick one song to to cruise in my car, it would be that one. But no, that's... um, (laughs) 
It's a good one. I, I just, yeah, that's just not my thing. So I don't get annoyed when I hear them, most of them, but there there are a few, way more than three that I just don't care for. But you, the, the two that you mentioned, of course, yeah, I hate the 12 Pains of Christmas. And I hate, what was the other one? Dominic the Donkey. Yes, I, I just, I don't get it. Oh, he, here's another one that I hate, and you're not, you're not going to agree. The simply having a wonderful Christmas time. It's this, he says the same lyrics for like three minutes. It's Pop, sucks. I'm not, I'm not even kidding. That's literally my most favorite Christmas song ever. Like you, Stop. I'm not kidding. Like if you, if you ask my mom, she knows that that is my favorite Christmas song. <laughs> I can't believe you just dissed that. I need to, oh, I need to go. No, you don't. No, you don't. Because here's the thing. It's the same lyrics. It doesn't mean it's not good. It's so happy and upbeat. I love it. It's like Paul McCartney wrote this on the toilet. <laughs> Moon is right. Can... Spirit's up. We're here tonight. And that's enough. Simply having a like that, over and over and in over. Yeah, but it, that's not what it sounds like. It sounds a lot better Fire than that. Fire of okay. children sing their song. Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong, ding dong. This song sucks. I'm sorry. How Steph. could you, Paul? Steph. I can't believe you're doing this to me. Did not know that was your favorite song. Does not change my opinion on that song. Wow, I cannot believe that is the one song you brought up out of all of them. Well, what is your favorite? Like, do you have any that you really, like, secretly love? Here's the difference between you and me, Steph, is that you have kept this, this is my favorite Christmas song, a secret the entire time we've been together. You act like you love all of them. Oh, I do. Right? So, <laughs> how am I supposed to know this? Right? How am I supposed to know that simply having a day below the Christmas time? <laughs> how am I supposed to know that's your favorite when all of them, when you act like all of them are your favorite? Well, I do love all of them, except for the little drummer boy. <laughs> but here is where we are different. I have made mention several times about what my favorite Christmas song is. Oh, duh. 98 Degrees, this gift. I knew that. Thank you. <laughs> Good luck, Paul McCartney, beating Nick Lachey's sweet vocals. I mean, yeah, no, that's hard to beat. But, I mean, I, I, I'm i just, you know, I'm glad that you have a favorite. And that you're not just like, it's all terrible. Mm -mm. All right, so we'll move on. Was this a Christmas miracle? Um, Neris Swam Sw Swanasang, 60-year-old uh, fisherman in Thailand, was walking by the sea last Monday when he noticed several pale lumps washed up on a beach. It was, and I'm, I'm going to probably say this wrong too. It was ambergris, am, ambergris. Basically it's vomit from sperm whales. Ew. Why is this important though? Why is this, why is it important that this dirt poor fisherman found all of this sperm whale vomit? Because it's used, believe it or not, in expensive perfumes. What he found was worth a fortune. Vomit? Yeah. It was worth a fortune? The lumps weighed 220 pounds, making it one of the biggest ever finds. He's already been offered a million dollars, or excuse me, $3.2 million. Um, from from the um, f fragrance companies. Wow. Why doesn't this happen to us? Why don't we find lumps of sperm whale vomit on beaches that we don't live around? <laughs> well, I mean, Zoe literally pukes a couple times a week. She has a lot of stomach issues. And I don't think her pukes worth anything, but I have to clean it up anyway. I was just walking my dog through New Cumberland. All, across, all of a sudden, I came across all this... Uh, Sperm whale vomit. <laughs> and now I just sold it to, uh, I can't even name a perfume company. I just. Coco Couture. I just, um. I just sold it to Coco Couture for their new vomit line. <laughs> who, but like, who even came up with that idea that that was going to be in perfume? Like, where does that even come from? 
I have no idea. Absolutely no idea. Uh, coming up in just a couple of minutes, we're going to talk Christmas some more, and we're going to talk about mall Santas and what they should be doing right now. It's the Puff and Steph Podcast. Freisinger Hyundai, a refreshingly different car buying experience. Freisinger Hyundai dedicates itself to customer satisfaction. From the initial sale to the maintenance you'll need during the life of the vehicle, Freisinger Hyundai treats you like family. Check out their large selection of both the latest Hyundai lineup to certified pre-owned and used vehicles. Come see how Freisinger Hyundai drives the difference and tailors the purchase process to your needs. Right on the price, right on the pike. Freisinger Hyundai, 6115 Carlisle Pike Mechanicsburg, 717 766 8422. During this time, many are out of work and struggling just to get by. It's good to know that your friends at Capital City Buy and Sell in Harrisburg have your back. If you're in need of extra help during the pandemic, you can pawn or sell unwanted or unneeded items that you may have laying around your house, including jewelry, electronics, tools, musical instruments, and a whole lot more. Capital City Buy and Sell is open seven days a week, and they're always paying cash. Plus, they have low pawn interest and terms if you aren't quite ready to say goodbye to your item just yet. Capital City Buy and Sell, 3517 Walnut Street, Harrisburg. Online at harrisburgpapawn.com. Great news, everyone. American Shaman of PA's doors are back open for normal operations, and they're ready to bring you the much-needed relief that you've been waiting for. They care about their customers, and their customers keep coming back for more. Steve K says, American Shaman products drastically decrease my back pain and relieve my stress in just one month. Thank you. Stop by your local American Shaman of PA store for a free CBD sparkling water and free samples. Find their locations and more at HempusHealth.com. Do you love saving money but hate buying one of those coupon books filled with places you'll never go to? Well, here comes Quick Save Coupons to save the day. Quick Save Coupons is an app where you can find savings for restaurants, stores, and experiences that you will love. And here's the best part. It's free. No big coupon books to buy, no websites to give your information to. Quick Save Coupons will show you all of the savings in your area right on your phone. Just go to Google Play or the App Store and download the Quick Save Coupons app. Then start saving money on many of the places you already go to. Now, back to the Puff and Steph podcast. I know how disappointed you were, Steph, when you found out that a lot of Macy's stores weren't going to have Santa's. Yeah, don't even get me started. Well, there's an article out there about the lengths malls are going through to actually keep the Santa's, to not just throw them out on the street like Macy's did. Right. We're talking about keeping Santa behind a plexiglass barrier like like he's some sort like the pope in the pope mobile how he's got like the like the bulletproof windows around him like someone has a has a hit out on santa so they're trying to keep him safe (laughs) uh bubbles again sometimes they're putting santa in a giant bubble which if you think about it i think is more christmas than anything because what does that look like an igloo no, Santa in a big bubble looks like a. Wait, don't tell me. Um... Santa in a big <laughs> bubble. It looks like. Look like a... a. A snowflake. Oh, a snow globe. There we go. Oh, my God. <laughs> sorry. Just sorry. It's. That's okay. Just give me a minute. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> so to me, Santa in a snow globe is like, okay, that's kind of cool. Like that that's makes a cool idea. Yeah. And then you walk up to the snow globe, you shake it. No, you walk up to it and you, you you tell Santa, you know, what you want for Christmas. I think that's not bad. Some some malls are like, you know what? We don't care. Just sanitize. So they're like, they're putting their Santas at risk, and they're just letting any kid, any dirty little kids, step up on his lap. But. Uh, they're like making them sanitize before because that'll do it. Well, I guess if they're sanitizing and wearing masks and maybe if the kid just sits next to Santa and not on his lap. Right. The question this article is asking, is it worth the trouble? And like, this is going to bother you. The author goes, can't the kids just skip the tradition for one year until the pandemic is under the, under control that's the question. No, no, they cannot skip the magic of seeing Santa. Are you kidding me? They maybe to this writer, it doesn't seem like a very big deal. But to these kids, are you kidding me? Kids wait all year to see Santa. 
kids or staff. One or two. Well, yeah. I mean, one or the other, but still. <laughs> uh, I have some interesting news. A research uh, just came, a research study just came out that said beer can be good for your health. They discovered science, scientists, not just people who like make beer. Uh, scientists discovered that some beers are bursting with probiotic microbes, bacteria and yeast credited with a host of benefits, including combating obesity, along with getting a better night's sleep. Belgian beers seem to be the best at this because they're fermented twice, once at the brewery and again in the bottle. So, my friends, beer could be the key to you losing weight. I mean, if you insist, it's worth a shot, right? And uh, last thing we're going to talk about here. This involves dating. And Steph, I know know you've had a little bit of issues in the dating world over the past uh, (laughs) year plus. Yeah. I'm just going to tell you that if you meet a guy and he's like, hey, let's go on a date in a cemetery, just say no, please. Oh, that's not a good idea? No. Back, uh, was it November 17th, Teleco Plains, Tennessee, a man went to a cemetery expecting to meet a woman for a date at 8.30 at night. When he arrived, no one was there. As he was waiting, a man came out of the woods and walked toward his car with what appeared to be a rifle. The man fired three shots at the driver's side window. The victim took off as he fired four more shots at the rear of the vehicle. At this point, the guy jumped out of the car and into the woods. He eventually, this is the, this is really funny, eventually had his sister go pick up his car. But when she got to the cemetery, she had found that the man had lit the car and it was on fire. What? Yeah. Like. They actually ended up finding the guy the next day. His name was Brandon Junkin. He's the one that did did all the, the work to the guy's car. That's all I know. I don't know if this guy had wronged him, if he didn't like him, if he had mental problems, if he's even the one that set up the date, or, right. if, or if he just happened to be walking around the cemetery and noticed a guy there and was like, that seems like a car I want to put some bullets in and then light on fire. Right. Like, what's the, like, what does he get out of that? I don't know. That is so disturbing. But if you ever get offered a date to a cemetery, maybe you turn it down. Okay. No, that's, I mean, that's good advice. So that's like going to be a big red flag then. I don't understand how anyone would not see it as a red flag. Like how, (laughs) how did this guy, I mean, I haven't seen the picture of the woman he was supposedly talking to. She must've been super hot. Cause let's be honest, guys will do anything if the girl's cute, but or, or you know, if it's just like it's been a minute, you know, I just I want to talk to someone I haven't talked, I haven't been on a date in years, so yes, I'll meet you in a cemetery. That's just maybe how people date now. I don't know. I've been out of the game. Is that a new thing? I've been out of the game for a while. I mean, maybe that's why I'm single because I've never been on a cemetery date. Is that what I'm doing wrong? No, <laughs> I can tell you with a hundred percent certainty. I don't really know a whole lot about your dating life. I don't know how you talk to these guys. I don't. I don't know a whole lot. You know, you know enough. (laughs) Um, I know that what you're doing right or wrong is not involving a cemetery. Like a cemetery is, yeah. Um, I don't know everything, but I, I know enough to know that you need to stay out of cemeteries. I mean, I, I guess it could be a quiet place to talk. And some cemeteries are like pretty and you walk around and you see like, headstones and structures and mausoleums and things like that. And you're like, Oh, this is kind of a pretty cemetery. But at at the end of the day, you're still walking around a bunch of skeletons, dead people. Right. It's not romantic. I mean, I guess there could be pretty flowers on the gravestones or something. (laughs) 
I'm but that's I'm, still I'm not trying, romantic. I'm trying to justify a, a cemetery date. I'm trying to figure out why people would do it. But this isn't the only story I've heard about people going on dates in cemeteries. I've heard of other people. What? Doing, yes. Now, again, I don't think it's like a trend in dating. You know what I mean? I don't think it's like a trend like avocado toast is a trend in food. I don't. I don't think it's like that. Like, have you? Have things are kind of stale in your relationship? Have you tried a museum date? <laughs> no, I, I haven't read that article yet. Well, you know what? Maybe, maybe it stems from people trying to be creative. Like, I don't just want to do the usual like dinner and a movie first date. I want to do something different. Maybe they're like trying to be creative. And that, and this would have been a first date had this been a real person and a real woman. Um. I don't, I guess if you say, listen, let's go on a museum date and she says yes, I mean, she's up for anything. I, I, I don't know. I would go to a museum on a first date. I say museum. I meant, I meant cemetery. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> I was like, wait, I don't know why we're talking about museums. I'm but. sorry. I meant, I meant, I meant cemetery. I don't know why I said museum. Maybe because I was thinking of mausoleum. I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I meant cemetery. We're sticking on cemeteries here. Museum's a good date. Cemetery? Not. Nah. Um, at any point in a relationship, Steph, not date one, but let's say you've been dating a guy for six months and he goes, hey, do you want to go hang out in a, in a uh, I almost said museum again, you want to go hang out in the cemetery with me? To just hang out there? Yeah. Do you want to go have a picnic? <laughs> yeah, no, there's so many better places to have a picnic. I mean, if there's a reason that they want to visit for a loved one or something and they're asking you to join them like that's a different story I i'm sorry i still don't think that's okay i do I, if you're in a serious relationship with someone and they want to go visit someone that was close to them i mean people do that i don't i think that that's totally fine hey, you want to go want to go meet my grandma <laughs> Oh, I mean, I think it's sweet. Like you want to go visit, you know, you want to go visit their, their grave site. Like, and maybe they want you to go with them. And <laughs> I do think that's, we're, that's not abnormal. We're playing the what if game. What if he doesn't tell you his grandma's dead and he's like, Hey, you want to go meet my grandma? And you think that you're, <laughs> you're going over to Mima's house, but actually you're going to forest lawn cemetery over there and you're going to, you're going to meet, you're going to go to her visit her grave. Isn't that, was that weird? Yeah, that's definitely weird. When you pull up to a cemetery, I thought we were going to see your grandma. We yeah, are. No. We are. Don't you love me? Wow, you're a terrible person. You're a terrible person. Just awful. Uh, coming up in just a couple of minutes. I can't believe this didn't work. How did this not succeed? It's the Puff and Steph Podcast. Freisinger Hyundai, a refreshingly different car buying experience. Freisinger Hyundai dedicates itself to customer satisfaction. From the initial sale to the maintenance you'll need during the life of the vehicle, Freisinger Hyundai treats you like family. Check out their large selection of both the latest Hyundai lineup to certified pre-owned and used vehicles. Come see how Freisinger Hyundai drives the difference and tailors the purchase process to your needs. Right on the price, right on the pike. Freisinger Hyundai, 6115 Carlisle Pike Mechanicsburg, 717-766. 8422. During this time, many are out of work and struggling just to get by. It's good to know that your friends at Capital City Buy and Sell in Harrisburg have your back. If you're in need of extra help during the pandemic, you can pawn or sell unwanted or unneeded items that you may have laying around your house, including jewelry, electronics, tools, musical instruments, and a whole lot more. Capital City Buy and Sell is open seven days a week, and they're always paying cash. Plus, they have low pawn interest and terms if you aren't quite ready to say goodbye to your item just yet. Capital City Buy and Sell, 3517 Walnut Street, Harrisburg. Online at harrisburgpapawn.com. Great news, everyone. American Shaman of PA's doors are back open for normal operations, and they're ready to bring you the much-needed relief that you've been waiting for. They care about their customers, and their customers keep coming back for more. Steve K says, American Shaman products drastically decreased my back pain and relieved my stress in just one month. Thank you. Stop by your local American Shaman of PA store for a free CBD sparkling water and free samples. Find their locations and more at hempishealth.com. 
Do you love saving money but hate buying one of those coupon books filled with places you'll never go to? Well, here comes Quick Save Coupons to save the day. Quick Save Coupons is an app where you can find savings for restaurants, stores, and experiences that you will love. And here's the best part. It's free. No big coupon books to buy, no websites to give your information to. Quick Save Coupons will show you all of the savings in your area right on your phone. Just go to Google Play or the App Store and download the Quick Save Coupons app. Then start saving money on many of the places you already go to. Now back to the Puff and Steph podcast. In Australia, police were called to a uh, building site around 3.30 Thursday morning after a security company reported a person walking around inside with a flashlight. Again, this was a new building site. It was kind of like three quarters of the way done. I believe it was going to be a store. Um, but it wasn't done yet. There was no inventory inside, no nothing. Officers with a police dog on patrol searched the site and found a man inside. Oh, it was going to be apartment units. Okay, so they found him inside one of the apartment units. Standing very still and pretending to be a statue. <laughs> Works every time, doesn't it? Like, okay, if, if you are in a department store and it's fully built and they have mannequins and you happen to have, you know, put some clothes on and like stand there real still, you could potentially get away with that. Potentially. Especially if it's dark, the lights aren't on, you know, and, and you're just another figure amongst other mannequin figures. It has the potential of working. Right. But if you break into unfinished apartments and police are looking for you and you just stand like, is, what, are, what do you think these cops are? T-Rexes? <laughs> if you stand really still, they can't see you. Don't move a muscle. They'll never find you. <sighs> Oh my gosh. This goes, you know, this goes back to what I've said before about these like dumb criminal stories. I feel like they realize they're going to be caught. So they're like, I might as well make this funny. You know, I might as well do something to get attention and to have this story go viral. So I'll just pretend to be a statue. Like, is that the first thing that comes to his mind? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. First thing came to his mind. Like, I wonder if I'll make it on TMZ. <laughs> Good luck, buddy. Good luck. No, he was caught uh, charged with trespassing. Shocking, right? Yeah, he's fine. He's probably already out. Like, But you're right. We're talking about him, and we're not the only ones talking about him. He's made world news by trying to hide from police by just standing really, really still. Uh, time to stump stuff. Americans produce 25% more of this from Thanksgiving than they do New Year's and the rest of the year. What is it? Produce? They make 25% more of this. Is it food? No. It's like the end result of something. The end result. Yep. So it's like a thing that happens. Um, yeah, it's an end result of something. This is what's left over. Oh, confetti. Uh, confetti is a part of this, but it's, it's more, it's all encompassing, including confetti. So it's like celebratory then? Yeah. Could be. But Ameri it's not food. Let me read you the, 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 the question again. Americans produce 25% more of this from Thanksgiving to New Year's than the rest of the year. What is it? Is it decorative? Decorations could be a part of this. Could be a part of this. What is the end result of your Thanksgiving? What is the end result of your New Year's? What is the end result of your Christmas? Um, oh, belly, like your your stomach hurts because <laughs> no. you ate so much. No, what do you have what do you have left after all of it's done? Oh, leftovers. No. Too easy. Um, but leftovers could actually be a part of this as well. Ooh, um, financial regret. <laughs> <laughs> financial regret? No. Um, I guess confetti wouldn't be part of financial no, regret. No, no, 
No, neither would leftovers. No. I mean, I guess if you have a ton of food left, you're like, we bought too much. Exactly. I'm or like, I spent too much. I, I'm financially regretting this. Um, ah, crap. This is hard. It's really not hard. It's not? When you think about it. You'll, you'll be like, oh, yeah, duh. All right. So Thanksgiving, you have leftovers. They could turn into this. Christmas, you have presents that are wrapped. Oh, trash. There we go. <laughs> That's what we're looking for. Uh, <laughs> Americans produce 25% more trash um, from Thanksgiving to New Year's than uh, the rest of the year combined. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, the average person does this nine times between Thanksgiving and New Year's Day. What is it? You do it way more. The average person does this nine times between Thanksgiving and New Year's Day. What is it? Oh, put on a Christmas costume. <laughs> the average person puts on... <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. The average person does this nine times between Thanksgiving and New Year's Day. <laughs> the average person doesn't even own a Christmas costume, let alone put one on nine times. Well, I meant even something festive, like a Santa hat or anything. No. Incredible. Um, well, you said I, d I do it more. You do this way more. but And you even you start earlier in the Thanksgiving, too. Listening to Christmas music. Close. Singing Christmas carols. Close. Baking Christmas cookies. No. no. You Watching bake Christmas movies. There we go. <laughs> I do have a question, though. You bake Christmas <laughs> cookies before, before Thanksgiving? Actually, no, I don't bake. I do listen to Christmas music and watch Christmas movies before Thanksgiving, though. Yeah, the average person watches nine Christmas movies between Thanksgiving and New Year's Day. Okay, that, the number should be higher, but I accept. I had a lot of people this past weekend after Thanksgiving post, like, take pictures of their TVs and, like, Elf they were watching. Yes. Yeah. I have watched, so far, zero Christmas movies. You know what? Speaking of... That's a good segue. You need to start your Hallmark Christmas movie review. I don't have a lot of time right now. That's the problem I'm running into. Okay, but I was thinking maybe you could find the time because it's really important. <laughs> wow, that's quite the solution you have there. Can't you do it at night? Um, I mean, possibly. What's what's the first one I'm supposed to watch? Okay, so um, for your convenience, I made a list on my phone. Of course you did. So let's see what we're working with. Um, we have Christmas Next Door, Christmas Connection, and the 12 Gifts of Christmas. Those are the three I have in mind. I can come up with more if you want. Well, like I said, I, 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 ha I don't have as much time as I had like last year to do this. So right. if I can get one or two this year, that's the only, uh, that would be... About. I think at least two is good, not one. For our Hallmark Christmas movie reviews. For those of you who don't know what we're talking about. Um, I think Christmas uh, Next Door is a good one to start with. I think that's the one you told me about a while ago. So Christmas Next Door it is. I'll see if I can't watch that at some point. Please please do. You won't regret yeah, it. Yeah, please do, Puff. Just, you know, find the time in your busy schedule to take, you know, an hour, two hours, and then all the time it takes to write this, you know. Your time isn't important, though. Your time is important. This is this is important. I mean, your time is important, and so is the task at hand. So I think it kind of makes sense. <laughs> you forget that I'm the one that thought about this, Nate. You're making the rules. Okay. Um, all right, guys. Have a fantastic weekend. We will see you back here on Monday. Bye-bye. It's the Puffin' Steph Podcast.